please uh, be warm. Uh, welcome to Professor Nelson uh, with us. Sadly, at this point, uh, the tape broke, or rather the video was full, and I didn't have any memory anymore. So that's a shame, because it was a really interesting uh, meeting and a really excellent class at the University of Seoul. And you could have noticed something of the student uh, response, but let me just give you a brief overview of what the talk is about. It fits in my work on the sociology of fame and Lady Gaga, and I have actually broadened my research to also include a discussion on the K-pop phenomenon. And so I gave this talk the day before the first ever Born This Way Ball in Seoul. And uh, in my work on the sociology of fame and Lady Gaga, I talk about a number of issues which you can here see on the slide. Among them are probably most important those that have to do with business and marketing. You see Troy Carter and Vincent Herbert here on the picture. Uh, also, there's a discussion on uh, the technologies that are used in terms of uh, media, uh, so particularly, let's say, the Internet, as well as the old uh, media, radio, television, and so on. And separate attention is then also paid on uh, the activism that Lady Gaga is involved with and that I think has given her a certain form of fame and notoriety even because of the sometimes controversial nature of these issues, which of course, as you know, uh, was quite an issue in Seoul because the Born This Way ball 
uh, was restricted to um, uh, fans of 18 years and over. And that's an issue actually that I wrote about in the newspaper in Seoul. Um, in terms of Lady Gaga's own perception of fame, she talks about fame both as a positive issue, which she refers to as the fame, but she also talks about uh, the negative impact of fame, which obviously she has addressed in her record, The Fame Monster, which she also talks about quite a bit. At the same time, uh, as Lady Gaga herself has said, she sees herself as a full-time Lady Gaga. You know, like she says, there is no person outside of Lady Gaga. Now, if we look at those issues, at those same issues, but then in the case of K-pop, you see some similarities as well as some differences. The similarities primarily have to do with the business issues, the media issues, as well as the fan issues and the, the conduct in live shows. Because, you know, K-pop is extremely popular uh, in Seoul, Korea, as well as in other Asian countries. And indeed, it's now more and more popular uh, across the world. On the other hand, if we look at issues that have to do with activism and spirituality, then K-pop is a much uh, safer form, you could say, of pop music. You know, the young artists that are involved in the bands and uh, individually or in, in bands, they tend to be, let's say, more restricted to the aesthetic qualities that are associated with pop music rather than extend that. Uh, beyond the world, you know, into uh, politics or rights issues, and let alone gay or gender issues, which are not a case at all. In terms of fame, I think that one of the uh, distinctly most important issues that the K-pop phenomenon has to do with is the question what will happen with these very young artists once they may mature out of this K-pop uh, phenomenon and you know they become older and they may actually uh, go into a period after the fame so that's quite an issue what will happen uh, with them and that is obviously something that will uh, take place in the near future then if we look a little bit about the globalization of k-pop so as uh, you probably know no matter where you are in the world you you know about k-pop and k-pop has attracted some popularity uh, particularly in East Asian countries, but also in Europe and in the United States with certain festivals, uh, some bands like uh, Girls' Generation, probably one of the more famous ones, uh, have been on American television. Uh, there have been demonstrations in Europe, like you see here on the slide. Um, there have been demonstrations, uh, flash mobs in uh, Poland, in France, so there is clearly a, a fan base, a growing fan base for this peculiar phenomenon that is, after all, uh, peculiar in the sense that it explicitly refers to a kind of music with reference to a country. So it's K-pop, K for Korean. And there's not many, uh, many kinds of music like that. The obvious other example is J-pop. Now, uh, I obviously said a lot more during the talk, but to round it up a little bit, uh, what the interesting issue is, is how K-pop will relate with other global manifestations of pop culture. Whether or not K-pop is a, a fad, whether or not it's here to stay, and to what extent it will uh, take roots, if you will, in Europe and the United States. That is something that is uh, useful to look at into the future. Okay, so that's about it for this talk.